Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news and it's a live show because it's Sunday morning. So we've got, look, people straight away. Why is Erling Haaland on the thumbnail? Because I felt like putting him on there. I just thought I'd mix it up. No, of course there is a story to it. But I'll talk about that in a minute. We'll also be talking a little bit about Jadon Sancho. Of course he played yesterday for a limited period of time, hardly touched the ball, to be honest with you. Some people saying he looked a little bit um, unfit, some a little bit more blunt than that, saying he looked a little bit overweight. But, I mean, look, he's, he's had two months off. I think you're going to see this. I thought for, for the fitness levels of Schalke yesterday were appalling, and that's why Dortmund managed to win. But let's get into this. The title of the show, Rivals Fear, Manchester United Transfer Plans. And this is very interesting, because I think that we've spoken about this for a few weeks, and it's an opportunity for Manchester United. And basically what this is, a source from a top six club is saying that Manchester United are best prepared to fast track their way to the top and the clubs around them in relation to the rivals in the top six will fear Manchester United this summer window. Because as we spoke about yesterday, Liverpool, um, this is coming from David Ornstein, who's a very credible journalist, Liverpool not planning to do any business. What are Man City's plans? We know they've got money, but the financial fair play, the ban, does that limitate them? Spurs never like to spend money. Arsenal have got players taking pay cuts. Chelsea, you just don't know what they're going to do. Manchester United for the first time in a long time, seem to be the club that have got the stability. And it's that stability that will strike fear into everybody else. If United, and, and not just in England, we're talking Champions League, we're talking PSG, uh, we're talking Real Madrid, we're talking Barcelona. All these clubs have all got problems, Juventus as well. But Manchester United could stride through this if they're brave enough. And um, the things that, that rivals are fearful of in this article is that Manchester United have spent a lot of money on their youth infrastructure over the last five years, which will start to bear dividends over the next five years. They've also got financial stability around branding, recruitment of commercial deals. Their spending has been quite clever over the last 12 months. And they do have the financial muscle to go out and spend if there are deals to be done. And of course, this is what I've spoken about and you've spoken about as well, is that if Manchester United are brave enough in this transfer summer window, some of our rivals cannot be brave because they cannot risk their financial structure and also on top of that so whilst there'll be less buyers in the market making it easier for us there'll also be more sellers in the market because they need to sell because they're in a financial mess so it's almost a perfect storm and i say storm because let's not deflate or uh, ignore the enormity and real life impact of what this unnecessary well not unnecessary unwanted virus is nobody wants this there's death there's destruction there's financial crash nobody wanted this no Manchester United fan wanted this no football fan wanted this it's a disgrace it's horrible and nobody wants it but it's a reality and the thing about reality is you have to live in that reality and Manchester United could well come out of this horrible situation in a better situation if they use it to their advantage and that, I hate even saying that sentence but should Manchester United sit back on their hands when they're in a position that others aren't to spend money and also take advantage? And also, as I said a few weeks ago, are you taking advantage of a club who are desperate to sell a player that they wanted a lot of money for, but now they can't demand a lot of money for, but they need that money? Like, everyone else might go, we can't spend anything. And United might go, well, there's 20 million. It helps you keep in business and we'll take that player. Of course, we get a great deal, but they still get the money. So it's going to be very interesting how this plays out. And I think, you know... I think much like the virus itself, some people are locking down, some people are not locking down. People are saying they're doing it wrong, they're doing it right. I don't think we're going to know for a few months who's done it right or wrong. And I think with football, it's going to be the same. Manchester United, we might look look on back on this in a year and say, we should have spent some money. You know, other clubs couldn't spend money, we should have spent some money. Or we might look back on it and go, we did spend them money, the money, they couldn't spend the money, and it's and it's been advantageous for us. So I think it's interesting, and I do think that United, I mean, I've not been talking about it for weeks, and I know a lot of you have not been talking about it for weeks because you're plucking it out of thin air. There is this feeling and there is this movement around Manchester United that they are not going to be massively affected by this because in the future the money will come back and they have got a strong platform now. So it'll be interesting to see how that builds out. Um, Haaland, where does Haaland fit into this? Well, Haaland, Bellingham and Partey would be a, a brilliant window, says Mr Beast. I mean, look, I watched the Dortmund game yesterday. Uh, I want to need to talk about Grealish as well and a few other things. There's a lot to, to update you on this morning. Cooley Barley, uh, Grealish, Raul Jimenez, uh, blood in the eyes of a United player. We'll talk about that as well. Bit of a rant about that, actually. But, look, football back yesterday, I loved it. 
I don't care what anybody says. I'm doing a do I'm doing a buy and watch along this afternoon on Mark Goldbridge. That's football if you want to join in for that. But I, I loved having football back yesterday. It didn't exceed my expectations, but it didn't lower them either. I never expected after two months out for everybody to play great football. I thought Dortmund had clearly kept themselves fitter than Schalke and Schalke looked way off the pace. Considering Schalke a sixth in the league and Dortmund a second, to get beaten 4-0 and Dortmund were only ever in third gear, I think that's a reflection on fitness levels. And I think as a Premier League... I, if I was Ollie, I would look at that yesterday and go, we need to get our fitness levels up because we'll get caught cold by somebody who's got better fitness levels. Um, Haaland, again, showing what he is and what we missed out on in January. He's a proven goal scorer and um, he's going to be a fantastic world-class talent. I think we know that. Sancho, as I said, we never really got to see him. Had a bit of a calf strain. Doesn't look totally fit yet. Um, I, I don't mind. I'll say this right now. Sancho watched yesterday. Crap. He played awful. He didn't even hardly play. And then when he came on, he hardly touched the ball. So if you were giving, you know, Sancho watch was redundant. I don't care if he does that for the next month because I still want Sancho, but his value won't go up. So I'm I, as a United fan, I'm like, it's great to watch Sancho, but actually I don't really care if he plays well or not because it keeps his value down, if that makes sense. On Erling Haaland, Deporti, Deporto Mundivo, I think it is. I read it on Sport Witness that Manchester United and Real Madrid are very interested in him. I feel that this ship has sailed. I mean, Erling Haaland at United, imagine if we'd got him, he would have been great. He would have scored lots of goals. I mean, I'm not being dismissive. He would have done. But I don't see it happening because he's. we must remember this. If you don't like Mino Riola, why would you even want Erling Haaland at the club? He's a great striker, but there are other strikers out there that are not managed by Mino Riola. I don't want a Mino Riola client at Manchester United. I don't. I don't mind whether it's Lingard or Haaland or... Verratti or Pogba or Lozano, I don't want Mino Riaia clients at Manchester United because there's no longevity. After two or three years, he wants to move them on. So I, I don't see the point in that. And also what I would say is, Haaland's very good, but have you seen his interviews after the game? The lad's weird. I don't know whether he's doing a... I, think, I actually don't think it's his personality. He's rude, he's abrupt, he's dismissive, he's arrogant. Or, or they're absolutely fine, I've got no problem with that. Zlatan's the same. And, you know, Zlatan can back it up. But I think, I actually think this is not Erling Haaland. I actually think this is one of the worst Poundland interpretations of copying Zlatan I've ever seen. He's, it's as if he's doing it on purpose and it just comes across as ridiculously rude because it's an act. He's not doing that. But I don't care. On the pitch, brilliant. I don't judge players off the pitch if they're performing on the pitch. And he's doing really, really well. But what I would say about Haaland is, if we'd bought him in January and have no doubt, Solskjaer thought he was going to get him. A lot of us thought we were going to get him and we missed out. And we missed out because of Riola, let's be honest. But if we'd got Haaland, we wouldn't have got we wouldn't have got Bruno because the money would have been spent on Haaland and we wouldn't have had the money for Bruno. So for me, if you're asking me if I want Haaland or Bruno, I'm happy with Bruno, to be honest. But I think Haaland will be great. But I think the links to Haaland, you know, it's just Manchester United because we nearly did buy him before. Um, Jay uh, Tindon Yahoo says, uh, buy Sancho and Burlingham and clear out Deadwood, do swap deal in Smalling and Lingard for Zaniola. And uh, Mark Pereira says, everyone dislikes Woodward, but his commercial acumen has helped us put us in a strong position uh, during COVID. Don't want him. We need a director of football, but it's helped, which I think is a fair, fair comment, isn't it? Do you think Haaland will already leave Dortmund after less than one year at the club? No, uh, I think he will be at Dortmund next season and then I think he'll go to Real Madrid. I think that... Mino Riola has spoken openly about wanting to take a player to Real Madrid and I don't think that he will get uh, that. Um, Tobias says Haaland's not weird. Well, mate, that's your opinion. I find his interviews really strange because I think he's trying to be Zlatan and it just comes across as awkwardly weird. When people are asking you interviews and you're going... And then you're giving short answers like you're the best striker in the world. That's fine. That's your game plan. And it will work because Mino Riola is very clever at this sort of thing. But I, I find it awkward and weird because I just don't think it's his personality. And I've seen him do previous interviews before recent ones and he wasn't like that. And he suddenly got this arrogant, rude, blunt persona, which I think is all part of what they're building with him. The pro I would I watch Erling Haaland's career with real interest. Um, I think he's a fantastic striker and I judge him as a footballer. But if you've been watching his career, it's it's almost it's almost like a, a player mode on FIFA career mode because it's chiselled. Start off at Mulder, then Salzburg, then Dortmund, then Real Madrid. And it's that's his, he's building his career. Mino Riola is lining his pockets, as is Erling Haaland. They're building a career and now they're building a brand around him. He's scoring so many goals, they're like, we need to build a personality around you. And the personality they're building is this rude, abrupt, arrogant striker that he wasn't a couple of years ago, that he is now, 
and this is all part of it. They're just it's, it's all an act, and it, and it'll be a very successful act. Uh, Ollie Chadwick says, I thoroughly enjoyed the game yesterday. Loads of those players would make us a better squad. Julian Brandt was a wizard. Bin off Haaland and get Brandt. I liked the look of Brandt as well, Ollie, but um, I don't think we'll be getting hold of him. I mean, I liked him at Leverkusen, and uh, but he does play in a very similar situation to Bruno Fernandes, doesn't he? Uh, welcome to Zui, the latest member of the United Stand Members Club, and would love to see Phil Jones sign up with Riola, says Mark Perales. Um, there was a story this morning as well from the Mirror saying that uh, Aston Villa will not be bullied on their valuation of Jack Grealish and that they want £80 million. Uh, that, that made me have a smile this morning. Uh, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night and that, that, that gave me a smile. Uh, Aston Villa will not be bullied on their, their £80 million valuation of Jack Grealish. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen in that then. Nobody will sign Jack Grealish for £80 million and Jack Grealish will fall out with Aston Villa and there will be, and he, and he will end up leaving anyway. So that is one of the stupidest stories I've seen of this lockdown. And there's quite a few stupid stories out there. But Aston Villa don't even want £80 million for Jack Grealish. They want around £60 um, they'll be lucky to get that, but they are not getting £80 million. And they can, they can be, I mean, this is a team that's in the bottom three. And they think they're not going to get bullied for their valuation of their best player. If they get relegated, they're going to lose millions. They're already losing millions. They're big assets that can keep them, help them survive for the next couple of years. They can't price themselves out of the market. So Jack Grealish won't go for £80 million. Unless a player commits a serious crime, I don't care what they do off the pitch. I'm with you on that, Mark, says Nat Kennedy Breeze. Yeah, look, I've always said this, and I think the older you get, the more you, you, the you realise it. And if you realise it when you're younger, you're years ahead of I ever was. I think as a younger a younger man, I used to idolise these players and think, you know, basically, to be blunt, they go to the toilet and gold comes out. You know you know the saying. And actually, you, you, know, you'd, you know who I'm talking about here. Icon of England, wore the number seven shirt. I absolutely adored this player when I was growing up. And he used to get stories about what he'd been up to. In, in his private life, you know, cheating and everything like that. And I'd be like, no, 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 I'm not having it, I'm not having it. And then as I got older, I was like, it doesn't matter what he's doing off the pitch because there's been other players that we know who are legends at Manchester United have done things off the pitch. And are you meant to dislike them because of what they do off the pitch? And like that Nat just said there, if they're doing something illegal, then you can, you know, I don't like Luis Suarez. He's a fantastic player, but there's some things he's done that I just think, I don't care how good you are. I don't want, I don't want you at my club. I, I don't like you. But it's very rare that I feel like that about a player because ultimately, whatever they're like off the pitch, and they could be a complete, arrogant, rude idiot, but if they're performing on a Manchester United shirt on the pitch, that's that, that's where it starts and ends for me. What they do on the pitch is what matters. What they do off the pitch, as they say, never meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed, but it's what they're doing on the pitch, and, and, and that's what it's all about. And also, I think football... I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been watching All or Nothing on uh, Amazon about the Dallas Cowboys. And, I mean, look, the infrastructure of NFL football compared to Premier League football, the setup. I mean, we're getting there, but, oh, my life, it's unbelievable. The money swashing around in that game is unbelievable. And that's my point. It's, a, it's about what they're doing on the pitch. On the pitch is what, what we need to aspire to. And, look, I want, I've got a few more transfer stories to talk about, but there was a quote I read um, Brits aboard 1354 says I've watched football for 45 years and if yesterday is anything to go by then forget it it's boring football without crowds is pointless it's like crumpets without butter I totally agree disagree with you on that one Brits and, and I'm glad that you've said that but I totally disagree with you you've took me away from what I was going to talk about about something but I'll come back to that I totally disagree with you I mean I put it well yesterday and I don't like bigging myself up but I basically said football yesterday was six out of ten Football with the fans and Premier League football for me is always 9 or 10 out of 10. No matter what the game is, even if it's nil-nil, I just love football. So watching a football game on a Premier League with, you know, Arsenal-Chelsea with fans, you know, take I love United, so let's just pretend it's Arsenal-Chelsea. I'm sat, I'm sat watching it on a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday lunchtime. The crowd's there. It's a Premier League game. Yes, 10 out of 10, right? That game yesterday between Dortmund and Schalke, all right, I'll give it a 5 or a 6. Because the fans aren't there, they didn't look for match fit. It's not the it's not the Premier League, so there's a lot of things dropping that score down. So I give it a five out of ten. Foot, no football, no fans, and no football is zero out of ten. You're telling me that you'd rather have zero out of ten, nothing for the next year. That's up to you. I'll take what I saw yesterday every day of every week over no football. So look, I I, I agree with you to an extent that it wasn't normal football that we like, but I'd rather have something than nothing. Because I, what I did like about yesterday was watching something that I didn't know the outcome of. Competitive 
football, I enjoyed it. And I think that's why a lot of people like my FIFA career mode, but although you'll pro I'll probably lose, you know, that probably you probably do know the outcome of that. Um, do you think Newcastle takeover will mean another competitor for quality transfers? Imagine if Sancho went to them. If Ed gets Sancho, then I'm happy, says Ollie Chadwick. I mean, that's interesting, Ollie, because um, there is a story coming out about Newcastle signing Cooley Barley and United are linked, and, and United and Man City are mentioned again. I think it's the player. Newcastle will get players. I've seen it happen at Blackburn. I've seen it happen at Chelsea and I've seen it happen at Man City. And you've got to look at the start of those clubs. Like Man City can get any player now because they've won titles and they're always in the Champions League. Newcastle haven't won a title and they're not in the Champions League. So they can't get any player no matter how much money they've got. They're not going to get Messi. They're not going to get um, De Bruyne. They're not going to get Pogba. Unless those players are mercenaries. And there are mercenary players out there, but players who want to win things, who are in their prime, are not going to go to Newcastle to spend three or four years to get them anywhere near winning a title and waste all their career just to earn money. It's the China effect. You know, some players went to China and you're like, wow, why did Carrasco go to China at 23 or 24? Why did Agarlo go to China at 26? You know, he was a decent Premier League striker playing in one of the best leagues in the world. Why did Oscar go from Chelsea to China? Money. They went for money. So there will be players who do it. They get called mercenaries. But the reality is you don't go somewhere in your prime that's got crap football but loads of money and not be called a mercenary. So there will be players that go to Newcastle. And Cooley Barley might do it. But if Cooley Barley goes to Newcastle, he's going for the money. He's not going for his career. He's better off staying in at Napoli. Because he won't see Champions League football at Newcastle for probably three years if they're lucky. So, yeah, Cooley Barley could go there. Sancho's not going to Newcastle. No, never in a million years. He might go in five years' time if they've won the league and they've got Champions League football. Sancho's not going to Newcastle no matter how much money they offer him because he is a player who, more like many players, is focused on building him. He will make more money than going to Newcastle by going making the right decision, made, right decision for his career. And so Sancho won't go, De Bruyne won't go, Pogba won't go, but some players will go to Newcastle. Simple as that. Um, just talking about uh, another transfer story, Raul, Raul Jimenez has been linked to Juventus by Duncan Castles. Remember we were talking about Raul Jimenez being a priority for United on Friday night. Apparently Juventus have entered that race. Juventus transfer window is going to be quite interesting. They desperately want Pogba, but can they construct a deal that's agreeable to United and will Pogba force the move to Juventus more importantly? Watch that space. I still think Pogba stays at United, but Jimenez to, Jimenez to uh, Juventus, uh, I could see that because Mandzukic, they like that sort of a player, so I could see that happening. Um, but oh, no, I just, just wanted to go back to what I was talking about there about, you know, I can see definitely that Haaland is just he, he's like um I think Haaland's got amazing talent earning Haaland but what they're doing with his career is a little like bit like constructing it's a bit like X Factor they're, they're building a product by using things that have been successful before as I say I've seen a lot of Erling Haaland uh, over the last sort of 18 months I've seen a lot of his interviews and some of the ones he's doing at the moment are just weird they're weird in relation to his personality because he's been rude he's been abrupt he's been a bit of an arsehole I don't mind that because I've grown up with McEnroe, Alex Higgins, Paul Gascoigne. You know, personality in football, we, you can't knock it. It makes it interesting and they're giving him a personality. But it's a, it's a, it's a moulded personality. It's moulder. It's a moulded personality and it's Mino Riola and it's, oh, I want you to be more like Zlatan. Speak, speak less but, a, but confidently and arrogantly and it makes you more of a brand off the pitch. And what... What where Ole, where Erling Haaland is failing at the moment is he's amazing on the pitch, but he comes across as a little bit dull. You know, if he's wearing um, if he's wearing Puma King boots, are people going to buy his boots or are they going to buy Messi, Ronaldo, Jadon Sancho, Neymar? And that's what they're doing with Haaland. They're trying to make him the next Neymar, the next Messi. So they've got to give him a personality, and that's what Zlatan had. So they're they're building a brand because football off the pitch makes you as much money as it does on the pitch and the dream is to be brilliant on the pitch and brilliant off the pitch Ronaldo Lingard's brilliant off the pitch not so good on the pitch uh, Paul Scholes was brilliant on the pitch not so brilliant off the pitch but then again times were a bit different but then again that was the Beckham time you know if Scholes could have Scholes was a better footballer than Beckham Beckham was a better brand than Scholes by a long way so the dream for any agent like Mino Riola who loves money is to build a brand and that's why Sancho will want to come to United because he can do both. But I, there is a point to be made here. Um, 
I read something from Andreas Pereira the other day, and this goes back to transfers. And he, he was talking about the game against. He was talking about playing Man City, and he was saying, "Oh, I get so I get so up for it. I've got blood in my eyes." And I thought there's going to be loads of United fans loving this. Oh, Andre, Andre, Andreas, my legend, and all this crap. And this is the problem that United have got at the moment: passion merchants. Andreas Pereira is not being good enough. And I like Pereira and I wish he was good enough, but he's not good enough. The bottom line is Andreas Pereira is not good enough. But he comes out with a line about the Manchester derby and blood in his eyes. And people will go, yeah, and this is the problem. I bet Bernardo Silva, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, when they're playing United, they don't need to say, oh, I get so up for it. I've got blood in my eyes. They just go, you know what? Let him get blood in his eyes like a silly little toddler. I'm going to bounce the ball back and forth over him. He's going to get more and more angry. He's just not good enough. And this is what I mean. Passion merchants mean nothing. Oh, I'll fight for that shirt means nothing. Because all of you would do it. You would play against Man City and two foot somebody and, and you know be passionate because you love the club. And this is where United have gone wrong. We're not Stoke City. Passion merchants I don't care about. I liked Ander Herrera because he was a passion merchant, but he was also had some talent. I liked Rooney because he was a passion merchant, but he was also one of the best players in the world. Passion merchants, oh, I get blood in my eyes when I play Man City. We fought, we've, this is the problem of the last seven years. We've fallen into that trap. Ooh, Fellaini, a bit of... Ooh, look at him. He, oh, yeah, Fellaini, he'll push him over. Ooh, he, look at him. Look at him squaring up to Jack Wilshire, the Hobbit. Like, you know... That sort of a mentality needs to disappear because I tell you what, if you wear that shirt, that should come as standard. The the you know the aggression in a derby, the the passion, merchants, that should come as standard in that shirt. What I'm focused on is ability. So when I see Andres Pereira talking about playing Man City and getting blood in his eyes, I don't care because I could do that. I want. And I don't think Bernardo Silva, as I said, I doubt Pat Bernardo Silva's there like a terrier before. Oh, they're playing United. Arr, arr. He's like, no, I'm going to go out and play my game in our system. And no matter how many passion merchants they've got out there, we're going to play our game and we'll, we'll beat them. And, and that's what I think, you know, passion's very important in football, but we need the players. So, look. That's my little rant for the day. I read that and I, went, I was like, yeah, but you're not good enough. I don't care how, many, how much blood you've got in your eyes. You're not good enough. I like the fact that you're passionate, but we need to be good enough. Passion will only take you so far. Stoke City will beat Manchester United on, you know, once every couple of years. But if we played them every week, we'd beat them more than they'll beat us. And I think we need to, that still needs to be instilled. And the positive thing is, I think we're moving away from that. I think Aaron Wan-Bissaka is determined and passionate but he's also one of the best right backs in the world. Bruno Fernandes, you know, you saw the passion when he had a go at Pep. Yeah, he's passionate, driven, winner, but he's also very talented. McTominay's heading down that road. Um, Harry Maguire's heading down that road. Rashford's heading down that road. This is what we need to build. We need less of the passion merchants who aren't good enough, the Fellaini's, etc., and more of the passion merchants that actually have got ability. And I think United are starting to head down that road. And I certainly think Solskjaer is aware of that, which is good as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, uh, anything else I wanted to talk to you about at the moment? I think I've covered about everything. Yeah, <clears throat> we are back at eight o'clock tonight. Um, and um, Fred has said it as well. No, no, Andres Pereira said it as well. Fred has said something similar and also so did Fred. Um, but the reality is whether Fred said it or whether Pereira said it, it's still still true. You know, Pereira comes on and puts a tasty tackle in and everyone says passion merchant. You know, everyone goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. And, 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 you know, actually, if I take a step back for a moment, maybe mentioning Pereira is a little bit focusing on Pereira because he's symbolic. You know, I could have said Lingard. I could have said Phil Jones. There's a few players I could say. But Fellaini's another one over the years. I said over the last seven years because I think over the last seven years... We've had too, we've we've put too much attention on oh a, a tasty tackle, a bit of effort, and actually I think where we're going over the last twelve months is the right direction. We've still got the people who want to put the tackle in. We've still got the people who want to fight for the badge, but they've also got the right ability. And Man City are a very good example of this. How many do, how many passion merchants have Man City got? Because it's not obvious. Because they're absolutely driven, they're professional and they're talented. And they don't need to worry about being out passioned on a day. You beat Man City by 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 outplaying them or out out 
well, outscoring them, obviously. But if you look at how we beat Man City, we nullified their threat and we hurt them on the break. We didn't beat Man City because we went and put a few tasty tackles in. We beat them through a system that counterattacked their system. And that is how we need to look. We need better footballing players with better footballing minds. The passion's great because you don't want players who play one week and don't play the next. The passion's great, but we need the ability. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. We are back at 8 o'clock tonight. We've got uh, Ricky and probably Adam. I don't know whether Saeed's back yet, uh, but that will be the 8 o'clock. Uh, um, and thanks, everybody, for watching. And subscribe if you are new. And this afternoon, I'm doing a watch-along on Bayern Munich this afternoon at, uh, I think it's 5 o'clock. And also FIFA career mode on Mark Goldbridge, that's football. Uh, first leg semi-final Champions League against Liverpool, so that'll be interesting. Thank you very much for watching, and I will speak to you all very soon.